Hi, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today I want to show you how you can paint this really beautiful forever spring tulip painting. These are flowers that will bloom forever. Even if you're a very new painter, you can do this. So get your paint, get your brushes, come back, and I'm going to show you every single step of how you create this painting today. All right, come on, let's go. I'm so excited to get started. This is going to be a really easy painting. Let me show you how you can do this at home. The materials you and I are going to use today is a 9 by 12 canvas board. This is a canvas board prepared with gesso, ready to paint. You don't need to do another thing here to get started. Over here, I have heavy body professional acrylic paint. Any acrylic paint will work. I just really like this acrylic paint. It makes me happy, so that's what I use in my studio. I have the colors phthalo blue, phthalo green, Cad Yellow Medium, you can use Hue to save money, Quinacridone Magenta, this right here is Titanium White, and this milky little plop here, this is actually something called Acrylic Glazing Liquid Gloss, and that helps me get a nice flow to my paint and slows down the drying time. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a tool called a palette knife. You can get these very, very inexpensively in plastic, and I'm going to take one scrape of my phthalo blue and one scrape of my phthalo green and I'm going to make a little bit of something called another one scrape. It's one in one. So it's one part green to one part blue. You kind of can get that from cooking and everything and I'm going to mix up a little amount of this paint and that is the color, see I'm pushing it down to get it off, of my background color. Now I'm going to take a nice two inch brush and I'm going to get this a little bit wet in my jar. This is a two inch stiff white nylon brush. It has synthetic filaments and that means it's not going to hold too much water and it's also going to be stiff enough to move acrylic paint around. I'm going to pull out just this much. Look at that tiny dusted edge of my phthalo green and quite a lot of white. I'm going to add my glazing medium to it for flow. If you don't have glazing medium, you can use water. Acrylic paint was made to go with water. And I'm going to mix this kind of well because I want sort of an even color. Look at that amazing bead on the brush. I'm going to come here in the upper corner and I'm going to start covering the canvas in a fan stroke just on the flat of the brush, fanning out. See this? Just fanning out easily. It's okay if there's a little bit of darker streaking or lighter streaking. You just want there to be an overall color so it feels like a smooth sky. This will help with our blended feeling when we go to do the flares or bokeh. I'm just brushing softly back and forth. My brush pressure, I'm not pressing in on my brush hard. See, I'm using just the tip of the bristles and that's why Stiff Brush is helping me do this work. Now I'm going to get a little more of this beautiful turquoise color, but it's going to be darker now, so I'm less white. See that right there? I'm going to come right here, tip of the brush, blending these two areas together. All right, it's darker down here. And something I can do is I can just dust. Look at how I'm blending. Acrylic paint actually does blend while it's still wet. So as long as it's wet, you can blend the wet into wet areas pretty easily. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. If you're having a terrible time getting a blend, right, and it's all rough there, a trick you can do is to take a clean number 10. I've got a number 10 bright here. Really, any brush will work. And just come along with the clean brush. Look at this. And dust those edges. Look how nicely they blend. That's a little trick you might not know if you're having some trouble. Now I've got the paint on it, but I've got a good blend, so I'll put that aside in my water and I'll keep painting here. Now I've got the result I want. I'm going to come and get even darker this time, even more of this color, so that the darkest part of my canvas is the far color, the far left corner over here, and the lightest part is the upper right corner. Super easy. You can do this. 
This is just about knowing the trick. And maybe I want to also make a nice blend here. So I'm going to take another nice, clean, little dry brush. And I'm going to make sure that I've just blended here too. Just give it a nice little dust, 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 dust. Whatever you need to do. My brush pressure to get this blend is very soft. See? Very, very, very soft. I really like it. I'm just dusting it. Just making sure, curving it up a little bit. That we've just got a nice little blended, out of focus background. That's really fun. So when I'm happy with that, I'm gonna dry that with my hair dryer, and then I'm gonna throw in the tulips. And you're gonna love how easy these tulips are for you to paint. Once I've gotten my painting dry and I'm ready to put on the next layer, I'm gonna pull out my number 10 bright. So if ever you're wondering what a brush is, look here for the number, that's a number 10. What type is it? Is a bright. Brights are shorter than flats. That means that these filaments are just shorter from this thing called the ferrule. And this is a firm filament, which means it gives me a little bit of spring back so it can easily push my paint. I'm gonna come here, get my brush a little bit damp. I'm gonna take out some of my phthalo green, add a little phthalo yellow to it. And just here in the corner, I'm gonna do a nice little wide, abstract, loose green. I'm gonna curve, I'm imagining my plant, and I'm curving these strokes out. Lots of the paint is showing through underneath. Can you see how much of the paint is showing through underneath? Get a little more, I might grab some glazing liquid. Just make these very loose and not anything. And don't go much past your dark area here. You're just trying to create a very blended, soft green area. Now is a good time to get a slightly smaller brush that gives you a lot of control. This is a number six bright. It's a very sharp edge, so I'm gonna be able to make nice crisp lines for the stems and I'm gonna be able to make nice leaves with it. So I'm gonna come over here, pull out a little of my green and my yellow. You can even put a little white in it, see that bead there? And I'm going to make a stem arcing up. I would like my stem to come up a few inches down from the top and over from the right. And I'm going to curve this stroke. This is a tall tulip. I need to leave room though, a couple inches of room for this tall tulip. Now he's gonna have a little friend that's gonna come out. Oh, it may be even a little slightly taller tulip. So that's where that tulip head is gonna be. Then I'm gonna curve this opposing way for balance. Curve up, curve up, curve up. Opposing way for balance. I'm using a very light brush stroke to keep my line thin enough to be a stem. If you need to reload your bead, that's the roll of paint on the bottom of your brush, you can. I'm gonna do another short stem curving low. And then maybe a little stem between these two that's shorter, mid length to right about there. And another mid stem right here. See how everything, nothing is the same length. I'm gonna get some of my green and my yellow. If you need water glazing medium, grab it. And I'm gonna make a big wide tulip leaf. So I'm gonna curve a line down and then curve another line. And then just come across with my paint, with my big wide tulip leaf. See how that feels like a tulip leaf? You might wanna take a little of your phthalo blue over to your phthalo green. Let's make a nice dark leaf, maybe kind of off here. See how it curves up, 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 down to a point? That's very tulipy, isn't it? Now I'm gonna grab some bright yellow. And I'm going to just also add some short abstracted strokes. Look at that, that's all it's taking. I'll get some white on my brush and a little yellow and this yellow green. And just come across here, making little abstract, loose strokes. 
One, two, three, four, five. Look at that, nice little leaf. This is really happening here. A little more white, because we want a nice highlight here. Picks up the green, sort of like a dusted green. So now this area just feels really finished. Rinse out your brush really, 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 really well. Because these colors are gonna be bright, you can see both my cups of water are quite dirty. This is an excellent time to change my water so that my bright pink tulips and my beautiful flares don't get muddy. I'm really glad you took the time to change your water. Let's take that brush, that number six bright, and put in the easiest tulips of your life. Are you ready? They're so fun. I'm gonna get my now clean water and just put a little bit of it on my brush, dragging off the extra. I'm going to take a smidge of my blue. I don't want the green in it, so I'm looking for a spot that doesn't have any green over to my canacridone. See how it's just very little? And I'm gonna mix these two together. It almost makes a, a beautiful wine purple. It's just such a great color. I'm gonna, without getting in the green, grab a little white, add that too. And when I have a color that I really like, I'm gonna come over here. I'm going to press in the corner of my brush and pull up. And I'm going to press in the corner of my brush and pull up a slightly shorter stroke than the first one. And I'm going to just pull that up. Look at that. Now I'm going to grab a little of my darker color and come over to the side. And a little of my darker color and come over to the other side, making this finished, neat little thing. Then get your white. Maybe a little pink right here. Get some more pink on your brush. So it's real pink and a little white. And I'm going to come back in to my center tulip. Make sure that it's finished out. Outer stroke, outer stroke. I'm looking for a nice, resolved, abstract shape. Look at that. That's really pretty. So let's rinse that out. And let's take a little, we don't want to get in the purple or the blue, a little of our quinacridone out and maybe a smidge of our, our yellow there. That's a really pretty color. Grab a little bit of your white and come right here. Make a nice little curve up. A nice little curve over, kind of finish that out. Let it be streaky and beautiful. I'm going to get some white here, extra on my brush. Come right here on the left hand side, pulling down a little petal, maybe peek one out right there. Just make sure that there's a nice white inline on that petal. Just the shape of the tulip. A little more yellow, that, maybe a little more white. The trick will be to keep your purple away from your yellow and your green away from your red. I'm gonna come right here. And this one maybe I will kind of point up the center petal just a little bit. I'm gonna pull some more white out. Just really let that tulip be very abstract. It's a good time to grab, even from over here, interestingly enough, I'm back into that little purple. Uh-oh, what am I doing? I'm gonna come here, put a little bit at the bottom of this tulip, dash, 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 dash. And then maybe a little bit right there. What a pretty tulip that is. Then with this great color that I like very much, that I just may not come here and make this center petal. Nice round shape there. Look at that great color we've got going. Grab some of this color that I had right here. That's the white quinacridone in the yellow. Ah, that's all it takes, not much going on here. Maybe wipe off my brush, rinse it out. Let's make another dark, dark one. So let's pull out our quinacridone into the purple mixture we had earlier. Let's make a nice dark tulip. Just 
a little bit of value there. See how I went swinged up with the brush stroke and then pulled it down? I'm just making these simple shapes. These are wonderful because of their simple, simple shapes. Put a little white right here. We want some value there. Come around the outside, come around the outside. That's all we're saying about that. And I think maybe another quite rosy one seems sort of lovely to me. So a little yellow, quite a lot of quinacridone. And a little white. Let's balance that out down here with a nice tulip shape, base body shape, and a little leaf out and a little leaf out. Grab some white, pull down a little highlight. That's all it takes to put those tulips in. They don't need to be complicated. They don't need to be stressful. They don't need to be upsetting. And now we're gonna balance out some flares and maybe a little bit of bokeh. So I have these pouncers right here and I'm gonna use a little bit of the color that I have mixed up in my background, right? And I'm going to press my pouncer down and spin, see? Pulling this out, spin, it's okay that other colors get picked up in it. You can even use up some of your glazing medium if you need to. And I'm going to just layer a couple of these dots. Maybe this one goes right close to that flower. Just a couple places, right? We're just saying that there's a little background color happening. Be sure and pull your sponges and clean them right away or soak them in water at least when you're uh, working, that way they don't get all dried with the acrylic paint because it really shortens the life of your pouncer. So this pouncer is about three quarters of an inch. The other pouncer was about an inch and a quarter. It's not hugely important. I'm gonna get this darker color, maybe add a little green to it. You can grab a little yellow. See how that's all it looks like? Pick up some of that white. It grabs some of the purple, but we don't mind because these are the little dots, right? So come here and add one of these. Look at how it just delights the background. Just a little bit, I'll put one here, real lightly. If you press lightly, right, then you get a light bokeh. If you press hard, then you get a firm one. The important thing is just to press down and twist. Press down and twist, and also layer. See how I layered those two? It creates space, doesn't it? Put one right there. So I've got a nice arrangement of bokeh that I very much like, and now I wanna put in some lens flares. To do that, I've gotta dry the canvas so I can do that with my white and yellow paint. So let's dry our canvas real quick. So when you're laying in backgrounds and foreground objects, it's always interesting to see when you do things and why. Often I do my bokeh effect before I put in my foreground objects, but because there's such a beautiful balance to this piece, I wanted to see how my tulips placed out before putting in my bokeh dots and my flares. That way I had nice placement around the canvas for all my objects and could be thinking about those things clearly. But if you like to place yours in before, of course that's okay, it's your canvas, it's your world. Let's put in our flares. One of my tricks for putting in my flares where I've got to use my detail brush is using a fluid paint. So this is a soft bodied paint. It doesn't have the heavy body that these others do. So it flows off my brush easier when I'm making fine lines or details. You can of course thin your white paint with water to get that effect. I just very much enjoy this. I'm going to get a small detail brush this is a number zero round. See how fine that point is, right? And I'm going to make a couple flares around my canvas. I'm gonna take the back of my brush and make some plans where I think these flares are gonna look really nice. And I feel like I need one right here in this upper right corner for balance. And now I feel like I could really use some, some drama right there. So I'm placing it right there. I'm gonna come up. Again, creating a visual line up here with another flare. And then I feel there's kind of a quiet space here Then I can add another one. And I'm trying to figure out where to make it not online with what's above it. 
Once I have that in, I'm gonna wipe off the back of my brush, of course, load up the tip with this paint. By the way, just so you know, uh, craft paint is also a soft body paint. So I really like what I use, but you can use other things and have it be very effective. I like to rest my hand on the canvas and pull up a straight line. My biggest challenge when doing these is keeping my lines straight. It's what I'm always struggling with. Even though I'm going to be doing the little yellow flare out from it, that's where my first really big struggle is. Also dragging wet paint across the canvas because I rest my hand on it. These are big struggles that I have. You may have different struggles. You know, you just nice fine line. So you can see how this brush gives me a very good fine line. And that's because of the size of the brush and the type of the brush it is and the quality of the brush. It's wonderful to have things that work as precisions. It helps my experience. Just pulling that straight up. I get asked sometimes if one can use a paint pen for this kind of thing, and of course you can. made them slightly different sizes so that they're interesting around the canvas. And then when I have them like this, I like to take out some corner flares. Like they're twinkling. Little radiating lights that are twinkling out before I add my little circling halos. Pull your lines out enough so they'll still show past the circling halos that you're putting in. Once you have that, I'm going to get a very small bright. This is a teeny tiny, the paint kind of is covering up a number two bright. So that's the two words that you're looking for on a brush. In this case, I'm going to pull out my heavy body paint because that's better for dry brushing. Pulling out some clean heavy body paint. I might even tip with a little bit of yellow in there. And I'm going to softly dust a little circle around my flare. If you need more white paint, get more white. You just don't want it to be glopped on the brush. It's fun to do. Put this one in. Just enjoying the roundness of it. Pick up more yellow if you need it. You can see how those feel like a soft flare. Too much yellow. What I did there is what's called offloading. I offloaded my brush. When I get a little overwhelmed by a color, I just offload or wipe off my brush. Just painting this soft halo around the dots. I'm going to get my detail brush back out again and I'm going to go back into my center and I'm going to very carefully put that back in because I really like that and I lost that in the painting. So you can do that too if you've lost your ends in the painting. Look at your flares and determine are they dramatic enough? Do you need anything else? If you do Go in, grab a little yellow, a little white, and just take your two inch bright to pull them out if they need to be more radiating. It really is about the finished look that you're looking for. See, I'm just pulling out these like radiations because I just want them to really feel like I'm losing those dots I just put back in. But that's acrylic paint. You just take things out and put it in and you don't worry about it. Just pulling it out because I want these to feel like bright little twinkle spots. 
and then back with the back of my brush again. I think I'm good though this time. Look at my piece, evaluate. If I'm happy, it's a great time to go ahead and sign with that tiny little detail brush. Let's do that. I'm gonna put this right in my white paint. I like to sign in interesting ways. I like to sort of be part of the canvas. I might even add a little yellow to this mixture here, just so it's not pure white. And you could come above the leaf or below the leaf. It really depends on your style. I think in this case, I'm gonna go above the leaf. Just thinking about where I put it because the signature is part of the composition. All right, that is just a beautiful and chipper painting for spring. Did you love doing that? Now you'll have flowers that never stop blooming and never fade. I hope you're good to yourselves and good to each other. Keep being creative and I wanna see you at the easel really soon. All right, bye-bye. <music>